God has three strategies for you to overcome every difficulty you face. Becoming a Christian doesn't mean your problems go away. Jesus warned us that we'll have trouble in this world, but he also said, take heart because I have overcome the world. That's in John 6.33. God will help you overcome whatever you're facing today. He does that in three ways. At the end of this video, I'll show you how to apply those three strategies to overcome whatever you're facing. Watch till the end. The action steps here are important. We have an enemy, the devil, who wants to steal from you, kill you, or destroy you. John 10.10, 10, Luke 22.31, and 1 Peter 5.8 document that. But we have Jesus who overcame Satan. Our lives have been forever joined with Jesus. That's what happened when we were born again, and Holy Spirit came to live in us. Our problems are not our problems anymore. They're also Jesus' problems, because we're doing life, united to, joined to, and in union with Jesus. The following two scriptures establish two things, that we're, our lives are united. Spiritually, we're tied together forever. And the second thing is that God has a plan. So God is going to help us because he needs us to complete his plan for the earth. That's what he designed. That's what he wants to do. 1 Corinthians 6, 17 says, But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Ephesians 1, 11. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God, for he chose us in advance, and he makes everything work out according to his plan. God enables us to overcome all our problems in three ways. First, by faith. Our faith brings God's power to change whatever comes against us. 1 John 5, 4 in the NIV says, for everyone born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Second, we overcome by character. God empowers us to outgrow, to literally grow stronger in character than the adversity we face. Galatians 5.22 in the New Living Translation says, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Romans 8, 28, New Living Version says, We know that God makes all things work together for the good of those who love him and are chosen to be a part of his plan. Character is born in adversity. God usually doesn't cause the problems we face, using them to grow his love, peace, patience, and joy in us. Sometimes, like the thorns uh, Satan gave Paul, God doesn't remove what irritates us because it makes us stronger in Christ-like character. Paul said his thorn was for the purpose of keeping him humble. That's in 2 Corinthians 12, 7. The third thing God does is rescue us a lot. <laughs> Isaiah 46, 4 in the NIV says, Even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he. I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. God rescues us from dangers we aren't even aware of. He's a very good dad. And that's what dads do. Look, if you're facing a really tough situation like now, it, it may seem impossible to you. How can this help you? You now know that the situation will be resolved by God, and you should also know that you can't be passive. Let's look at how God will resolve your problem. First, each of us has been given a measure of faith. Ephesians 2, 8-9, Romans 12, 3. Your faith is your weapon against all the enemy's attacks. Your faith is in God's goodness, God's mercies, and his word, the promises he has made to men in the Bible. Pray in faith. Pray for the people who oppose you. Scripture tells us to pray for our enemies and pray against the problem and the spiritual forces behind that. When we do that in faith, many times we overcome our problems. He who is in us is much greater than he who is in the world. The Holy Spirit in us is greater than Satan. We have the power to win most of the battles that we're going to face. And God wants us to grow in faith so we can fight not only for ourselves, but also for others. Second, cooperate with God as he develops your character. Some problems, like Paul's thorn, don't go away. But you outgrow the problem. You become stronger than the problem. Remember, at the end of your life, you'll give two gifts to Jesus, who you have become and what you have done. Who you become is the greater gift. You need Christ-like character to complete God's plan for your life. Third, God rescues you. God will use people to do most of his rescues. So don't be so proud that you won't accept help when it comes. When you're standing in faith against a problem and you've done all that you can, accept help as a gift from God and an answer to prayer. One of the mistakes I see from people in really bad situations is that sometimes they give up. 
They just sit there and wait to be rescued. Get up. Fight with the faith God has given you. Do all you can to get out of that situation. And be encouraged. As you work at your problem, you'll grow more like Christ. God's rescue isn't always a gift. Sometimes it's a path that you must climb to get to the other side of the mountain that you face. Pray with me. Father, I thank you that you work even bad things for my good. I thank you that you make me an overcomer by building up my faith, by the character you build in me or you rescue me. Thank you for your love protecting me throughout my life. Today's activation. Today is day eight of our Thanksgiving countdown, 10 days to a grateful heart. It's now eight days till Thanksgiving. Give thanks to God. Grow a grateful heart. That's our activation. Psalm 9-1 in the NIV says, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. A study of 5,000 Christians revealed the differences between those who are consistently more like Christ and average Christians. And what caused the greatest difference? Professor Michael Zigarelli, who conducted the study, was surprised to find, as he says, quote, of all the possible explanations for why some Christians look more like Jesus than others, one explanation, one characteristic, clearly stood out above the rest, gratitude. Gratitude is powerful. Build yourself up with gratitude. Three steps. First, make it personal to God or Jesus. Talk to them out loud. Tell them what's on your heart. Answer these three questions. What are you deeply grateful to God for? Why is that important to you? And how does what God did make you feel? Second, in your journal or in a note-taking app, write the story of what God did, why that was important to you, and how that made you feel. All three steps are important here. Third, do this first thing every morning. Throughout the day, if you find yourself grumbling or upset or having any negative thought or emotion, remember what you wrote down, what you're grateful for, why that's important to you, and how you felt. Relive the feeling. Let gratitude reframe your thinking and lift you above the discouragements and difficulties of life. Finally, please share your gratitude experiences in the comments of this video. Your personal experiences with God are more powerful than any teaching. You can see my gratitude experiences in the comments of the videos in the 10 Days to a Grateful Heart playlist. If you enjoyed this podcast, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for listening, and thank you for doing the activation to let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Romans 12.2, New Living Translation. Take care, and God bless.